Hello and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a short video on a engine wiring harness for a 2002 to 2008 uh, Mini Cooper, uh, Mini Cooper S uh, W11 uh, engine designation. Um, generally any of the ones with the supercharger. Uh, I have a brand new wiring harness for it. Uh, mine died on my car and so I I'm going to today uh, do a quick video or a breakdown on what I have here um, and just give you a rundown of all the connectors, all the wires, where they go, kind of generally how you can tell which one leads to what uh, because I have recently seen a few posts with uh, people asking and so this way I've got a brand new harness. It's clean, fresh, uh, with no damage to it and this way you can see exactly what the wires are supposed to look like and I can give you a rundown on exactly where they're located in the engine. So if you ever have a question, you can just refer to this video and all the information will be here for you. So let's get into it. is this would be a wiring connector for the back of your generator. Uh, this connects to the back of your generator, um, linking it to the entire electrical system. Uh, this is what basically is the wire that transfers the power from your generator to your battery to the rest of your car. Um, very important, uh, make sure your connections are clean and dry uh, when bolting this on but this goes directly to the back of your alternator. <clears throat> Second set of wires in the loom. Uh, again, uh, they go actually in a similar direction to your <clears throat> generator wiring. Um, they actually connect in a similar loom. Uh, they have spots that go in similar spots. So just to be aware, these two run in the same direction when you are trying to run them in your car. Uh, we'll start with this first connector. This first connector is for your crank sensor. Um, easy to tell, it's got a little lock on it, um, and it's away from the end of the loom. That's about midway through, but it's a great connector. Uh, three pin, um, the standard plug, nothing crazy about it, but very easy to identify. So this is your crank sensor. Next in the loom, they've got this taped up, but this runs quite a, little, quite a ways further. Uh, but we'll go with this one because this one's technically the next in the loom. This goes to the back of your generator. Um, easy to figure out. Again, uh, it's a three pin connector, um, black. This one goes directly to the back of your alternator generator. Just be wary. This third wire uh, is a single pin wire. Uh, red single pin wire. This goes to your AC. Uh, it's the only thing that feeds into your AC as far as power goes, uh, but really easy to identify just because it's a circular plug and there's no locking pins on it, uh, similar to what you'll find on other connectors. But really easy to identify with regards to where it is in the loom. So you've got your crank sensor, your alternator generator wiring, and then your AC wiring, which is a circular one. Next is your body side connector. Uh, this one feeds to just near the tower, uh, your driver's side strut tower on the front. Uh, this one feeds down to it. There is another ground wire around down here. Oh, actually, right here. So this, this one's easy to identify. It's the only circular plug in this loom. And again, it should be, would be uh, this ground actually particularly goes right near it. Uh, there's a ground spot uh, that you can connect this to, uh, but this is your ground connector, little eyelet connector, really easy to identify. Um, this is your DME connector, pretty standard, uh, quite large, multiple pins, um, but easy to identify with regards to its size and its shape. Uh, not gonna spend time on that, uh, so get into this now. Uh, this is your Fuse panel, or this goes to your power distribution block in your engine bay. Uh, it sits up in a similar manner 
to this uh, while it's in your car. Uh, it'll go your DME, your power distribution block, and then your strut tower. Um, but this one sits under a cover, so it's not really worried about heat shield or weather protection or anything like that. These next two, uh, these would be your uh, sorry, your temp sensor. Uh, it is a two two wires uh, setup. Uh, this feeds similar to that when it's actually in the engine bay. Easy to identify with the red locking tab on it and just its proximity to the the housing here that holds the big clump of wires uh, or the wire mash, whatever you want to call it, the wire spaghetti. Um, easy to identify. Red locking tab, temp sensor. This other one is a six pin connector. This goes to your throttle body. Uh, it down underneath here, similar to that, and goes down to that component. Um, but, uh, we're gonna move on to the next set. Um, gonna go around to the actual engine harness itself here. Start with this. So this is your boost pressure sensor. Uh, this sits up in a location similar to this, uh, actually in the engine bay, uh, just off of the driver's side of the valve cover. Uh, this connects to the boost pressure sensor, which has a great tube that runs down into your, your intake tube. Uh, next is your O2 sensor wiring. This is a four pin connector. Um, there should be a gray wire uh, O2 sensor, uh, at least on the stock O2s, uh, that comes up from the uh, manifold tunnel uh, where your exhaust leads down to the back of your car. Uh, but this is your O2 sensor connector. And on these. This would be your knock sensor and your intake pressure sensor. Um, these both go feed underneath your intake manifold or your intercooler um, down to the front of your intercooler. Um, and again, this two pin connector here is for your knock sensor. Uh, this four pin connector here is for your intake pressure sensor. Next is your coil wiring. Uh, this is one of the ones where you have a matching set. Uh, we have another one with a matching plug here. I'll get to that one later. That's way out of the way. We don't need to worry about that. Um, this one, again, is your coil wiring. This feeds around the back side of the engine um, from approximately here. And then it just feeds up to your coil pack in the back of the engine. Uh, it's got a red locking tab and it's a singular wire kind of by itself. So that helps to denote where it might potentially go. Uh, next in the loom, those bad boys out of there, we have your injector wiring. These are injector wires. This is what killed my car or the lack of protection on these is what killed my car. Uh, so what happened is the intercooler, unfortunately, is designed to sit above this. Uh, it rained, everything went bath time on my wires. And as most of you may know, um, bath time and electricity don't go well together. Um, and it took out my DME, killed it. Uh, now I'm stuck having to replace this and said DME. Um, but Again, just an unfortunate design uh, from them. Uh, maybe they might send me a new wiring harness or a discount or something or some mini merch uh, just because of an unfortunate design if they see this video. There you go, mini, just as a thought. Um, but yeah, so unfortunate design. Uh, the wires cracking, uh, water getting on the wires that were cracked. Uh, arky arky, no more sparky uh, is what ended up happening. But this is your injector wire. Uh, these are your injector plugs. Pretty easy to denote just because of where they sit in the loom and they're spaced quite evenly, just as your injector should be. Next in the connector loom, this was the same as your coil pack wire. This on your injector loom or the injector circuit wiring is actually for your cam sensor. Uh, this one is a three pin, it's exactly the same as the other one, um, but Easy to denote just for the sake that this one goes down on the passenger side of the engine in between the engine mount and the valve cover. Uh, there's a little plug that sits in there. It's your cam position sensor. Uh, 
And the last but not least on the end of this loom, this is for your purge valve. So just ahead of that same mount that's hiding this one is a small canister looking thing that has two hoses, one coming to the intake system, the other one going back to your fuel system. Uh, this is the plug for that. Two pin connector, really straightforward. All right, so I think that is that, is that. Now, now we get into the starter and injector. Oh, uh, this one here. This particular one is for your reverse switch. As uh, so this one goes down the back side of the transmission, uh, kind of looped in and tucked in there, uh, really easy to miss and kind of overlook. Um, but yes, this one goes to the back of the transmission. Uh, this is your reverse switch. Uh, and the last section of wires. These two kind of go together, so I will lay them together in my video. Um, this is your starter wire, and this is also for your starter wire. Uh, these both attach to the back of the starter, this one particularly your solenoid, uh, this one to the actual starter motor itself. Uh, very large wire because this is the wire needed to turn your starter when your starter is cranking in the morning. And it takes a lot of juice sometimes. I'm not going to get into that. So, these two starter wires. The remaining connectors on this. This goes to your uh, oil cooler housing or your oil filter housing. Uh, this is your oil pressure switch. Um, these ones are really easy to identify just because it's a big bright green connector. You can't really miss it in any of the entire loop. Let's see, look, look, where is it? Yeah, you, you can't miss it. Next is the power steering. Uh, this. This is your power steering connector. This goes to your power steering pump. Um, and last but not least, sorry, this is a six or three pin connector. Uh, really to identify. And last but not least is this gray bad boy here. Uh, this one can cause you troubles. Uh, well, not this particular connector, but this component. Uh, this is for your power steering fan. Uh, it's been known, uh, I think, one or two cars might have had this issue where their power steering fans pack up, and then it takes out their ride fan, and then it takes out their cooling system, which then in turn causes their car to overheat, causing sometimes catastrophic issues with the engine. Um, I've been lucky enough not to ever have that issue. Um, I've been able to sort it out generally every time, uh, but this is the wire for that ridiculous component that they thought would help the system um, and maybe not put it on the same system that cools the entire rest of the car. Um, nonetheless, that is the engine wiring harness, um, power steering fan, power steering, oil cooler. Um, so that's it. That is the, the engine wiring harness for a 2003 to 2007 Mini Cooper S uh, W11 engine um, with an R53. Uh, and as far as I know, it's actually W11 for the R53, uh, just because it is a supercharged variant. Um, oh, sorry about that. So uh, yeah, I uh, hope this helps somebody. Hopefully you're able to use this to sort something out uh, one day if you're having issues. Um, if you have any questions, please go ahead and fill them in the comments. Um, until next time, thank you for watching. I appreciate it.